Good morning. Welcome to Bitcoin Bounce. My name is Joseph and today we're going to look at some crypto news. Uh, we're going to uh, go over a Circle, uh, the USDC coin and there's some interesting news there. Uh, then we're going to look at the chain link coin uh, there's definitely some positive developments there and so uh, chain link definitely moved into one of my top 10 coins that i'm going to invest in and i'm going to tell you why uh, and then we're also going to look at the top, top performing coins uh, of the week um, for the ones of you that are on terra classic uh, the coin really went up uh, quant uh, reserve rights rsi r helium uh, hnt and the the, the micro coin mkr all of them this search that week uh, uh, this past week uh, um and so we're just gonna look a little bit at it but before we get to that uh dion can you quickly just show us what's happening with chain link hi guys yes sure um so this is the chain link chart on the daily you can see we had a high of 53 dollars um and since then we've obviously broken down with bitcoin and we were then trading in this channel yeah and had a breakout and since we've been um actually taking quite a few trades of of chain because it's been trading in this range and um the one trade we've we've been wanting to break this level is this eight dollar so every time we break eight dollar we go for 950 but um We've been watching this for a while. It hasn't actually broken the the eight dollars yet, but in the meantime, um, the six fifty to eight is a good trade. You can see that just keeps on hitting every time we hit the low. Yeah, it's six fifty. So, but the big thing with Chainlink is just it's it's very undervalued at the moment. You can see from the high, trading at around about seven odd dollars, coming from fifty, and it's broken out here, just ranging sideways, and um, you can see just getting ready for a breakout. It's a Joseph. Awesome. All right, so let's uh, jump in. We're going to listen to Coin Bureau uh, and just go through those various uh, news items. Enjoy it. If there is one issuer that has benefited from Terra's collapse, it's Circle. This is not only because the resulting regulations will prevent competition, but also because it has allowed USDC to fill the void left by UST. This was the headline from Coindesk, which asked the question of, quote, whether decentralized finance can mature with decentralized money at its core regarding USDC's native expansion to Cosmos. I suspect the answer is no, but it ultimately depends on who you ask. In addition to Cosmos, USDC will be expanding natively to Ethereum's Arbitrum, Near Protocol, Optimism, and Polkadot by the end of the year. To clarify, USDC's native expansion to Cosmos won't be taking place until sometime early next year. If you watched our most recent NEAR protocol update, USDC expanding to its blockchain should come as no surprise. That's because a former Circle executive recently became the CEO of the NEAR Foundation. This is more significant than you think because NEAR protocol is eerily similar to Solana. The biggest difference is that NEAR protocol doesn't experience constant outages. This has apparently been an issue for Circle too, particularly since USDC was being heavily leveraged within Solana's ecosystem. As such, it's quite possible that Near Protocol could replace Solana as USDC's de facto home chain. For now though, Ethereum continues to hold the lion's share of the USDC in circulation. I'll be doing a video about what Circle is planning with all these smart contract cryptos later this week, so stay tuned for that. Now, another Circle-related headline that caught my eye was that the company had partnered with TBD, a subsidiary of Block, formerly known as Square. For those unfamiliar, Block is headed by Twitter founder and former CEO Jack Dorsey, who is known for being a Bitcoin maximalist. That's why the news that Circle had partnered with TBD to bring its USDC stablecoin to, quote, lay the foundation to access stablecoins globally is so surprising. You would think that TBD wouldn't be interested in a centralized stablecoin, given that it is a Bitcoin-focused company. In any case, it's clear that Circle is expanding rapidly, despite the crypto bear market. This might have something to do with the fact that most of the USDC in circulation is backed by short-term US government debt, around $40 billion to be exact. Assuming this entire $40 billion is invested in two-year treasuries, this means that Circle is earning an interest rate of over 4% per year 
on $40 billion. If you do the maths, that's a whopping $1.6 billion in annual interest, well over $100 million per month in pure passive income. There is a lot you can do with that kind of money, especially during a crypto bear market. This means you need to start paying close attention to Circle. The video I'll be releasing about the stablecoin issuer later this week will definitely help with that. Anyways, another crypto project that's been making the headlines lately is Chainlink, which recently partnered with Swift. For context, Swift is a messaging system used by over 11,000 banks around the world. This means that Swift is basically the backbone of the existing financial system. Chainlink's partnership with Swift will see the pair develop a proof of concept protocol that will make it possible to send messages between cryptocurrency blockchains and the existing financial system. In other words, it'll make it possible for cryptocurrency to interact with the existing financial system. The caveat is that the existing financial system isn't all that fast. It takes days to settle transactions on Swift, and that means the proof of concept protocol wouldn't do all that much to improve the existing financial system if it becomes adopted. The bigger question is whether this protocol would increase the demand for Link if it does get adopted, and the answer seems to be no. That's simply because Link is used to pay Chainlink Oracle providers for their services. These Oracle providers then turn around and sell their Link for fiat. Even so, that doesn't mean that there couldn't be a speculative pump associated with Swift's Chainlink integration if it comes to pass. The only problem is that this speculation is nowhere to be found during a crypto bear market. Case in point, Link continued to crash despite this significant news. Now, another problem is that Chainlink's Swift partnership may not actually be all that significant. That's because the consensus in cryptocurrency and elsewhere is that these proprietary interbank messaging systems are on their way out. Swift's partnership with Chainlink may be evidence to that effect. To my mind, the only reason why Swift would partner with a crypto project is because it's trying to keep up with the times. It's not all that different from all these publicly listed companies adopting NFTs when they know deep down that decentralized alternatives will replace their intermediated business models. Still, this doesn't take away from the fact that Chainlink is building cutting-edge tech that's attracting the attention of seriously significant institutions. My only hope is that this somehow manages to reflect in Link's price, especially since much of Chainlink's operations seem to be financed by its selling of Link. So, Turning to the charts, we can see that BTC is on the brink of breaking down. This is the case on the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. All we need is a catalyst to trigger a sell-off. I reckon all that Credit Suisse stuff could be a good candidate if it turns out to be as serious as social media is making it seem. Last week's top performing cryptos were Terra Classic, Quant Network, Reserve Rights, Helium, and MakerDAO. So, Starting with Terra Classic, Lunk rallied on the news that Binance will begin using a portion of all Lunk trading fees to begin burning its massive supply. Lunk's price action is unlike anything I've ever seen, and I'm not even going to try and speculate on where it could go next. All I will say is to exercise extreme caution. Next, we have Quant Network, whose QNT token seems to have rallied because of the Cordicon conference that CEO and founder Gilbert Verdian attended. Now, this is odd because I don't recall seeing any significant announcements. If there were any, please let me know in the comments section. As you can hopefully see, it looks like QNT has finally begun its reversal after a massive rally. I expect that it could return to the $100 level in the coming weeks, and it will likely go lower if a black swan catalyst like Credit Suisse comes around. As for reserve rights, RSR rallied because of the upcoming launch of the Reserve Protocol, which is scheduled for the 10th of October. I can't say I know all that much about it, and I must admit I am skeptical given RSR's poor performance relative to other cryptocurrencies during this crypto market cycle. 
Similar to QNT, RSR is approaching overbought territory and will likely see a massive correction once the reserve protocol is released. In short, the charts suggest it's going to be a sell the news event, but bear in mind that the charts aren't always right. Neither am I, for that matter. Now, when it comes to Helium, its HNT token rallied on the continued hype around the project's migration to Solana. Nova Labs, the company behind Helium, also recently partnered with T-Mobile to fill the gaps in its 5G networks. As I mentioned, HNT never managed to rally out of the hole it's currently in. It also seems to be forming a triangle on the daily, which will probably break to the downside. If that is the case, the target will be around $3, and it could fall even lower. Finally, we have MakerDAO, whose MKR token seems to have rallied because Nexo paid back a DAI loan and withdrew wrapped BTC from the stablecoin protocol. I reckon there were concerns about Nexo's massive wrapped BTC deposit after it was revealed that eight US states are probing the crypto platform. Like all other DeFi tokens, MKR is almost back where it was before the last crypto bull run began. Unfortunately, it will probably fall lower with the rest of the crypto market in the coming weeks.